Do you recognize this lady in her car? That's right, she's the same mastermind who stole from Charlie and his buddy. Imagine my surprise when I saw she was paying me a visit too. This was a good wake up call for me. I often joke about how no one would ever try and break into my house because I have a security camera the size of my head and I'm working on a home defense robot with a paintball turret to chase away intruders. I even spent all of open sauce telling people how this project was just for fun because my neighborhood was perfectly safe. My guard was down, I was out of town, and my robot was disassembled. I couldn't have been more unprepared. Now I'm home and it's time to refocus. I'm going to show you how this porch pirate almost got me, and then I'm going to get my defenses back online. This lady was a total pro when stealing birthday gifts. She had tools, and she was in and out in under 30 seconds. Her winning streak must have made her too cocky, because now she's making careless mistakes. She starts off her mission by backing into my driveway. This is a remarkably stupid move, as in Florida, we don't have front license plates. Unfortunately, at this moment, I didn't have cell service, so I missed all of my camera alerts. When she gets out of the car, she's on top of the world. She's so happy she's found someone who is out of town that she's ready to fly away. She even politely asks if anyone's home. <laughs> then she double checks the windows on the front to see if any lights are on. Now that she's sure I'm gone, she goes to the side of my house to check the gate and returns with something in her hands. Who knows what's in that bag, but it's probably not helping her mental clarity. On her second pass, she's absolutely puzzled by my robot mower. To her credit, the mower didn't do anything while I was gone. Funnily enough, I actually knew the mower had a connection issue where it was, and I planned to move it to the right side of my house, so I left that side gate unlocked. Silly move on my part, but I thought the neighborhood was safe, and I don't really have anything to steal in the backyard anyway. As if she could sense my mistake, she wanders over to the unlocked fence and disappears off camera again. After her recon mission, she walks past my girlfriend's car and clearly checks to see if there's anything to steal. Apparently, my girlfriend's status as a broke college student was very upsetting to her. Here's the weird part. At this point, she's been at my place for about five minutes. Rather than leaving, she got in her car and sat there on the phone with someone for a few more minutes. I'm not sure if she forgot she's supposed to be stealing things, or if she was calling someone over to help her break in, but she showed no sign of leaving. By this point, my cell service started working, and I received a bunch of notifications from my cameras. I saw the clips, and I knew she had bad intentions, so I got on the camera to ask her what she was doing. I said it's back to you. She said she thought she knew someone who lived at my house. I knew that was a lie, and I had enough of her shenanigans, so I told her the police were on the way, and she was shocked that someone would report her. I was bluffing when I told her the cops were coming, but I did call the cops to report her later. After this happened, I have to admit, I was a little excited for a second. I thought I had information that could crack the case on Charlie's theft. That was all shattered when I posted the video to local groups and someone commented with her address and then someone else replied with her license plate. As it turns out, she's a local menace and police are aware of her and are working on a case against her. Despite this recent incursion, my neighborhood is in fact very safe. We are so safe that our neighborhood watch signs have all but rusted away. Even safe areas have problems, so it's time to raise my defenses for when that happens. The first layer of defense is my cameras. To make them a bit smarter, I installed this Google Coral in my camera server. It's a little AI stick that can detect people in cars and fun things like that. But object detection on its own is really annoying. I hate getting person detected notifications when I'm out doing yard work, and I don't want to get a notification every time my camera sees me drive off. To avoid this, I'm going to code the camera monitor so it knows where the property lines end. The code needs to do two things, track when objects enter the property and determine intruding objects real world position. This is all made a little bit more complicated because the camera can rotate. With a fixed camera, you could just select a few pixel points and use that as the property line. With a rotating camera, I need to use angles instead of points and only a few of these angles are visible at a time. Normally, the camera feed is 1920 by 1080 pixels. To get the view angle of any pixel, we simply consider the image to be 60 by 30 degrees, which is the camera's field of view, and then the origin is at the center of the image instead of the top left. The view angle is basically the offset in degrees from the center of the picture. Even if the camera moves, the view angle of any given pixel stays the same. To adjust for this, instead of the center of the image being 0, 0 degrees, the center of the image is then calculated as the camera's currently reported angle. 
Now any angle we get is relative to the camera. I'm not great at math, so I did a lazy little trick to figure out which angles are inside and outside of the property. Instead of using a pan and tilt angle, I just pretend they're X and Y coordinates for a flat shape. This lets me use a Python package called Shapely to do all of the thinking for me. If a pair of angles are inside the shape, that means it's on the property. There's probably something geometrically wrong with this, but it seems to be working for now, and it only took like five lines of code, so I'm sticking with it. I'm using a nifty site called Pushover for sending the notifications. Their API is free, but the iOS app was only like five bucks for full access, and that was well worth it to me. Now I have picture notifications telling me when people are here, and I even have separate notifications for when someone pulls in the driveway and then gets out of their car. The best part is that it allows you to send priority notifications that make sound even when your phone is muted. One of my big gripes with Ring is that if someone is at the front door at night, I'm just gonna sleep through the vibration alert. That won't happen with this system. So now the system knows who is on the property or not. That helps me when I'm home, but for actual pacification of intruders, we need to get their position in the real world. This is a simple trigonometry problem. Remember having to calculate how tall the ladder leaned against the wall is in math class? In this case, we're trying to figure out how far the base of the ladder is from the wall. Since the camera reports its current angle, we can use the angle side angle method to solve the triangle. I just have to measure how high the camera is mounted, and then I can write the triangle solution as a function and convert pixels to locations relative to the camera. This works because Florida is flat. If my area was hilly, the distance would be thrown way off. After we have the distance and angle, we can easily convert that into a GPS coordinate by adding those numbers to the camera's position that I grabbed using Google Maps, but I'll explain that more in another video. This camera is better than a normal doorbell camera, but on its own it still wouldn't stop my uninvited guest. For that, I need my robot. I have been calling him my home defense robot to stay family friendly for open sauce, but I forgot to rename the Raspberry Pi when setting in my booth, so a bunch of people noticed his real name, Shipbot. Shipbot is going to be the next layer of defense, but to do that, I have to get the paintball turret mounted on him. Okay, so I'm getting ready to mount the turret right now. I took this foot pad off. This is what it looked like before, and the turret is gonna mount right here. And eventually, uh, once I figure out all the clearances and stuff, because I don't want to keep this Tupperware container forever, I'm going to have the turret mount right here in the center. That way it looks a little bit more normal, but I think it'll still look okay mounted right there off to the side. Here's the turret mounted. It's a little wobbly because of how tall it is, which is fine because I'll secure more of that later, but just to get it tested, that's gonna be okay. Uh, it stands at almost four feet tall. It's about 44 inches. So it stands at about 44 inches tall. This thing is huge. If you've seen sentry turrets before, you'll notice something a bit different about this one. Most turrets have the camera mounted on the barrel or at least in line with it to make targeting easy. That's perfectly fine on a static turret, but on a robot, every part lowers battery life. So instead of having a turret camera, I went for just one camera on the front of ShipBot. So how can the camera tell the turret where to look? I was stumped at first, so I decided to visualize the problem. I guess after failing trig the first time, I actually learned something, because we're dealing with another trigonometry problem, the side angle side triangle. Most cameras can't solve this triangle because the easiest solution requires knowing the distance to the target. Thankfully for me, I picked the Oak D Light, which actually has a 3D distance sensor built in. My initial tests for this design were promising. I printed an adapter to fit a laser pointer in the barrel of the paintball gun, but making sure the code was accurate was still a challenge on my own because I couldn't see the data when I was in front of the turret. Thankfully, my retired police dog Paul was willing to help me test. Once everything looked accurate enough on Paul, I got back in front of the turret and the aiming was on point. And no, I don't know why I decided to hold the camera instead of putting it on a tripod. How do you feel about being used to test the turret's aim? A lot of people have asked me if ShipBot is legal, and the answer is that most states let you remove a trespasser with non-deadly force. That's why bouncers can manhandle people at bars. The only other legal roadblock is laws around booby traps, 
but this doesn't count as a booby trap because I will approve targets on my phone. Speaking of non-deadly force, some of you are probably thinking you could bring a shield or something else to just block the paintballs until he runs out of ammo. Here's the thing, he's not using paintballs, he's using pepper balls. These things are gnarly. They're supposed to explode into a six foot cloud of pepper spray. And the best part is they have free one day shipping. Security systems, like ogres, have layers. The first layer is don't be seen, but hiding my house sounded like a lot of work, so let's skip to the next layer. Don't be a target. Odds are, porch pirates are gonna pick the house without active countermeasures. That's why I bought this sign to warn any porch pirates or other villains of their impending doom. Look how great that looks. Now thieves will know what awaits them when they come to my place. It's time to begin human trials of the turret. One of my friends drove over seven hours to experience the possibility of a pepper ball filling his lungs with fire. Except, the paintball gun had a leak and didn't work. I tested it the day before, but sometimes with old parts this happens. The automatic targeting was also acting a bit funky when people got too far away from the camera. Luckily, the paintball gun issue was a quick fix. The valve o-rings were ancient and crumbly. It's frustrating, but thankfully I was able to fix that on my own. The fix for the turret code was a bit more involved. I wrote that code at 3 a.m. the day before I flew out for open sauce, so I don't remember how it all works. I recreated part of the code in Unity so I can find bugs more easily. This helps me see that the triangle solving was working, but I made some mistakes converting the triangle angle to an angle the turret could actually rotate to. I was worried when I saw the aim was off by a few degrees when the target got a bit further away in the Unity environment, but it turns out this was just a quirk with getting the object's pixel position in Unity and not an issue with the code. Testing virtually is helpful, but let's see if this fix solves the problem I saw earlier. I'm testing it a bit further than where it was failing before, at about 19 feet or 5.8 meters. During this test, I added a green dot to the preview to see where the laser should be aiming. I definitely should have done this earlier because it turns out I didn't really think about where the center point on my body is. There is no way I'm getting shot there. I raised where the turret's desired aim was and then I was happy with these new results. With everything working again, let's get the boys together for some paintball roulette. Everyone's here and ready to get hit. Unfortunately, the turret camera was having some issues determining how far people were when they were by the garage. We could have just gotten closer, but then the pepper cloud would drift toward everyone, so I decided to aim the turret myself with a servo tester. Hunter was first up and decided to skip the roulette part and immediately face the pepper ball. Firing. He took it like a champ and then decided to try the rubber ball too because he's a slut for punishment. Hunter, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Next up was Blake with 50-50 odds. Ready, Blake? Yep, just do it. Ow! That was right in the center. <laughs> that was right in the center. <laughs> Since I've known him for 23 years, I lied and told Charles I would give him 50-50 odds. Blake got the rubber ball, so the pepper ball was already chambered and ready to fire. Adding more balls to the hopper didn't change his fate. Ready? Yep. Oh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> There's a tent in your shirt. So I um, blank fired a pepper ball on the garage and that's, I don't know, 50 feet away. And we're all getting wrecked on the end of the driveway. And I'm like sniffly now. It's rough. Godspeed, Dan. Dirt Nasty Dan had an honest four to one odds, but still got a pepper ball. Yeah. On my turn, I took 50-50 odds because I had no idea if a rubber ball or a pepper ball would be worse because the rubber ones were very heavy. Two, one. Oh. Just click again. Okay. Oh. <laughs> the pepper ball zapped me on my lowest rib, and that thing hurt. I feel like I have a pretty high pain tolerance, but I have no idea how everyone else kept it together so well. They said it felt like a beast thing, but to me that was worse than stepping on a Lego. Maddie felt brave after seeing everyone else get hit. The pepper ball that hit me looked reusable since it only had a small crack, but firing it was a terrible idea because it just exploded and gassed everyone. Okay, oh fuck. It exploded in front of us. We loaded another pepper ball, but that one barely missed her. Miss. 
The third shot grazed her on the arm and then deflected onto the wall. Blake was feeling cocky and wanted to see what the pepper wall was like since he got the rubber one earlier. Ready? Yeah, I just fucking feel good. By the end, we were all covered in pepper dust and our skin was on fire. The fun part was washing it off. You know how hot showers feel like lava when you have a sunburn and how ice water feels like liquid nitrogen after you have a mint? That was what my whole body felt like while trying to cleanse. Every temperature setting on the shower just burned. It's hard to say if the pepper balls were more effective than the rubber balls. Both hurt pretty badly and the pepper cloud didn't seem as potent as advertised. Maybe these were bad balls, or maybe I need to increase the velocity on the paintball gun, but the impact alone is probably a big enough deterrent. The reason the aiming stopped working is because I was a silly goose and forgot to check the camera's max range, which is about 10 meters or 30 feet. 30 feet is probably good enough for intruders, but I'm glad I didn't get hit at that range because my welt lasted for over a week. Well, that's all for now. In the next video, I'm going to work on improving the turret, and then I'm going to make shitbot intercept intruders. So make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.